Hey everyone, this is Vembrand. Welcome to a new chapter of Valentart The Great War. We're starting in the middle of the action already. With uh, what do I do? Okay. <laughs> I thought it was, gonna, it was gonna sweep all over the, the, the road like this. Yeah, right now we're escaping the German POW camp. As we just met Anna and... Oh, Jesus. This car is very bad at taking turns. <laughs> oh, we got a Zeppelin now. Oh, jeez, I didn't look at the ground. Okay. <laughs> Alright, the music slowed down. Oh. oh, wonderful. Now I need to look at stuff happening from two different di directions. Oh, thank god. I have not for pretty simple, uh, oh! God. Not bad. Oh, geez, not. Okay. I really need to learn the, the characters' names. Well, no. Well, I almost have it. There's Emil, Anna, him. <laughs> I need to go find some uh, health. Son, what? Merci, Walt. <laughs> Thank you, Walt. Cute dog. Alright, so... Oh, God, I don't know why my, uh... No, Walt, what are we doing? Okay. Walt. Stop staying in the middle of every... Of everything now. I don't want you to get shot. Let me pet you though. What? Oh, I can't. I can't pet you. What? Wait a second. Is there. Oh, there's some new historical fact actually. The trenches. Between the sides, there was an imbalance in trench conditions. After securing a head start in the trench construction, the German reinforced them with iron and concrete, while the, alley, the Allies had to wallow in the mud. The Allies' changeover policy maybe contributed to this. Allied soldiers had seven days to shift to, to shift to the front, whereas Germans were allocated a spe specific zone with a, for an indet indeterminate period, giving them a chance to settle in. <laughs> the Labyrinth. Vimy and... Neuville Saint Vas were to position the German were quick to fortify. D here they built the labyrinth, a complex network of trenches and channels connected to underground sleeping quarters. Allied armies had successfully attempted to seize this key position on numerous occasions. Due to the huge number of casualties in the late 1915, the position declared declared the position as impregnable. Memorial to the Moroccan Division. The Moroccan Division, whose motto was No Fear, No Mercy, come by in soldiers from across the French colonial Africa and the Foreign Legion. The division included Moroccan Zouaves and Tunisians and Algerian infantrymen. In the 1915, the division seized the Vimy Ridge, but in the absence of the backup battalion HQ, they were forced to retreat after two days. The Moroccan division is the only division whose flags were decorated with the with the Legion of Honor. Hmm. 
So we're probably gonna find some uh, Mor uh, Moroccan stuff in the battlefield. Naval naval cannons. Naval cannons were capable of firing heavy duty 800 pound shells. Due to their weight, they were mounted on special tr rails of transport to firing platforms. In the event of a retreat, artillerymen were instructed to destroy the cannons rather than let them fall into enemy hands. Hmm. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six items, and I saw that the last item were cannonballs. Alright, let's hide. Okay, I wasn't sure from which way they were gonna come. Oh, yeah, the health is over there. Okay, let's hide. Let's hide. <laughs> I need to figure out where the collectibles are. What I expected, anyway, those guys up there. One guy will never be able to push that. Hey. Oh. Hey. Mon, mon beau. Merci, Walt. Periscope. To observe the enemy trenches without ha drawing fire, the officer and soldiers used periscopes. Mirror mounted in the tube that could be raised above the, the parapet with no risk of health. Nope. Yeah, I can hear him coming now. I'll turn around, I'll turn around. Okay. Really? They just started running out of nowhere. Now let's just wait. Right, I'm gonna need to go get uh Oh damn. <sighs> Okay, I can't have him, uh, just, uh, walk past these guys, unfortunately. Let's just make our way back. Well, Walt is still safe. Thank you, Walt. Hey, wait, uh, I lost my headphones right now, so I don't know how close they are. On, guys, go away. Thank you. There we go. We got a canteen. I'll get a flask then. Infantryman's flask. Soldier frequently suffered from thirst, and water supplies were far from regular. All soldier had canteens in which they transported water. And also wine. Some also had flask with goat skin, which were less heavy to carry. Oh, this guy did not end uh, his voyage on a high note. Uh, the zeppelin's there, huh? Time to go. Where exactly is he supposed to be, though? What? Anyone? He's done. But he's a. Hey, hey. No. 
Just to make sure, is there anything I missed? I could have missed over here. I really don't think so. Right, let's make our way in. Are you alright? I don't know how pulling him for a meter made him feel better, but... Whatever. Alright, so let's put this down here uh, right now. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see what I need to do. But first, what can I find in here? Hmm. I need to find. Well, is it safe to throw sticks of dynamite? I don't think so. But whatever. Oh, okay then. Uh, vial of Nevostenine. To combat problems of morale and physical fitness, army doctors sometimes distributed Nevostenine injections. A composite of magnesium and potassium intended to give weary soldier a hearty boost. Huh. Alright. Well, get over there. I hope that nobody realized that there was a dog walking around with a stick of dynamite. Okay, first, I'm gonna set up the TNT. I know what to do, guys. The TNT set up. Now I need to set up both bombs. Good boy. Right, well, <laughs> yeah, stay away from there. So nobody's gonna... Um... Investigate as to why something just exploded. Merci, right. <laughs> Good boy. Walt is sad. Is Carl over there? Oh, okay. I'm in the background. Right, so I need to get a Walt down here. Could all just jump down with me? Huh. Guy <laughs> looks cute. What? Oh, what's this? No, wait. A letter from a German soldier. Dear Andrea. We've been stuck down this hole since January, and I can't stand it anymore. I'm sick of the back teeth. To the, I'm sick to the back teeth with living with like a rat. I really miss life as it was before, trolling beneath the linden, the linden trees, with you. I miss working in the factory. All my love, your Daita. Hmm. 
Well, yeah. Dealing with, with war was hard uh, on both sides. So, got myself a bottle. And there doesn't seem to be anything else in here. I feel like uh, these <laughs> these things are gonna explode under my feet. <laughs> Ten of sardines. Soldiers are all fed by their prospective armies, but they also receive parcels from back home to improve their daily lot. Fin tins of fish and pate gave them a more copious nutritional meal than their daily army f army fare. There we go, I can finally uh, bring Walt back down with me now. Come here, Walt. I'm surprised that they're never wondering why there's a dog that keep appearing everywhere. What, what the? Alright. The game lost focus for some reason. Finally, the last item, British coins. While the war, the war raged on, life continued and the economy too. The war economy was composed of both barter and currency system. Soldiers purchased provision in town using their pay. In 1914, the pay in the British of a British private in the line of in the line regiment was one shilling a day, the, st the standard king shilling. Oblig obligatory deductions were made for a wife, for a wife and children, six pence for the wife and one pence a day for the child for each child. Nowadays, one shilling has the estimated purchasing power of about oh, 3.21 GPD or 5.42 USD. In 1971, the shilling was replaced with the 5 pence count of coin thanks to the decimalization. This guy is a terrible guard. So there's a door here. Another door here. And I need a hand crank. So let's see this one first. The crank is over here. Can't do anything about it. There is, although a uh, how do you call it, a hook up there. I need to go to the next. I need to go two more. I see. Nice. Now all I need to do is go back on the other side now and send Walt to press on that switch. On Walt. There we go.
So we got more German soldiers uh, hanging out in, in here. This is gonna be hard if I can't control the the cannon. Okay, okay. There we go. Gonna be hard though because it's gonna be non-stop. Uh... There we go. Who's that guy supposed to be anyway? Baron von Dorf had escaped again. Hmm. But Emil had still managed to find medicine for Freddy. Freddy, okay. Then I'll remember your name now. Back on the road again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Freddy. would take them to Rans, where they would at last pick up the trail of the elusive Baron and his Zeppelin. Really another uh, this again? <laughs> uh, looks like we're playing as Freddy this time. But anyway, this is where we're gonna stop it for today, guys. Uh, we uh, we've successfully managed to save Freddy, and now in Reims, Reims, France, 1915, and being bombarded by the Baron again. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next chapter of Valiant Hearts: The Great War.